My name is Shirley and this is Joe's Puzzles channel and I've got a puzzle haul video for you today so what are we waiting for? Let's unbox together. So I toured all the charity shops in the area over the last couple of weeks and all the puzzles I've bought all cost £3 or under and I thought it'd be fun to do a video and I thought it'd be fun to actually unbox them together because I haven't actually had a proper look yet. So uh, I think we better start. And to add a little bit of interest and a bit of fun for you viewers, I'm not going to tell you how much each puzzle costs. So you've got to guess how much each one costs. And at the end, I'm going to show you the most expensive and most cheapest puzzle. So without further ado, let's start with the first one on the pile. So we have... A jumbo puzzle and it's Mickey Mouse and I thought yes I like this because I like a bit of Disney got a bit of Disney in my life so without further ado let's have a look inside what we've got so charity shop puzzles very often sealed with sellotape so I take my trusty kitchen devil knife and open up the box and share with you inside. I'm going to remove this sticker so you can have a proper look at the image and there we go. So really really fun. Um, not sure what age we're talking but it's a retro montage it says and it shows Mickey Mouse and cartoon and a bit of text and the speech bubbles which I think is nice and fun and let's have a look inside so let's just press with the box lid and we've got oh, oh we've got a resealable bag brilliant let's get rid of that box lid down there let's open and have a look at the pieces shake that bag <laughs> there we go Jumbo is a good make. I've done jumbo puzzles before and the sturdy, good thick quality, if you can see that. And it's, you know, nice illustration featuring Mickey Mouse. And so, oh, never forget the elephant because elephants never forget. So that is my first puzzle in my puzzle haul. Next one, Ravensburger, right. This is an exit puzzle. So I've just removed the sticker to tell you the price. And it's brand new, still shrink wrapped. And this is 759 pieces and it's an exit puzzle. Now I've seen people do these on Instagram and YouTube and they intrigue me. And I think it's like, it involves a code and you've got solve clues and I think the image on the front I've been told is not quite the finished image but it's similar so let's have a look inside take the shrimp wrap off with my trusty knife again and I was amazed I found this in the charity shop to be fair brand new and still sealed just brushed with the rubbish whoops a bit more the cellophane loves us, doesn't it? Um, so there we go. And this one is level three. And it's called The Curse of the Wolves. Mm, I wonder if I'll be cursing this puzzle. So um, let's see if I can open up. Give the box a shake. Nice sturdy box. And there's the bag of pieces in the Ravensburger bag. Standard Ravensburger, let's open up, cut straight to the chase shall we, and yes standard colour on the back for Ravensburger and standard piece shapes, but also have we got different shapes in our sauce, something a little bit different, ah yes this has got numbers on, I hope I'm not doing maths because I'm no good at maths, um, and then you've got these funny little shapes, so Perhaps that's part of the code. Mm, the pieces look a bit dark. It's a dark image. Do I like dark puzzles? Mm, 
Have you done an exit puzzle? How did you get on? Let me know in the comments below. And um, what have we got? An envelope. Oh. Is there anything in the envelope? Does not say? Is that a solution? Is that a good luck card? Let's have a look. Oh, we've got some blurb in different languages. Have we got anything in English? You can see. The Curse of the Wolves. Perusing a yard sale, you stumble upon an old book about local legends and folklore. As you curiously flip through the page, one story catches your eye. Oh, so there's a story, and you've got to read that, I take it. And at the end it says, can you break the spell before they attack you? I take it the wolves, not the puzzle pieces, eh? <laughs> at a complete loss. Hmm, I could be. It could be an exit puzzle after all. I'll break into it, and I've got to try and break out of it. So there we go. I'm going to put the puzzle pieces back in the box and think about doing that when I'm in, feel like I'm in need of a challenge. So I should get back to you on this puzzle. Let's close the lid on that. Oh, what have we got here? Ah, let me remove the sticker. Sometimes I wish they wouldn't put the stickers on the actual image. But then I suppose you've got the image on the back. No, I'm going to have to cover that over. So there we are. Round puzzle, um, a thousand pieces. And this is by Otter House. And I love it. I love it because I love round puzzles. It's called The Crazy Gang. And it features, it's like gerbils or hamsters. Um, really, really cute, really fun image. I love round puzzles. And I didn't know Otter House did round puzzles. So I'm not sure what year this is. So let's open up and look inside. Remove the cell and take off the edges again. I'm so glad that they do actually do this because there's nothing worse than getting home and find that you've got a loose box and the pieces are all over the place. And hopefully they are still in a box and not on the puzzle shelf in the charity shop. So there we go. Oh, you didn't see that, did you? Blinked and you mi missed it. I hope you did. <laughs> oh, here we go. And as I was saying, we've got a bag stuck to the box. Oh, what have we got here? Oh, and we've got two bag. Oh, two bags, both kind of open. And now, is that the edge pieces in one bag? No. And then we've got another bag which is half open and pieces loose. Right, I'm not going to open the edge pieces, I'm going to open this bag. Adjust my glasses. Right, uh, oh, these are quite small pieces. And beige backing, boring beige backing. And nice thick card. I've done Otter House puzzles before and they're usually square or oblong but not a round puzzle. I've, did you know Otter House did round puzzles? If so, have you done an eight? So if you do, or have done an eight, then please let me know. And um, I'm not going to investigate too much with that because I think it could get rather messy and have pieces everywhere. But that's a general idea of that. So let's put that down on the side. Like that. <laughs> Next we have, oh, crown puzzles. And we've got fruit. St take the label off the fruit. <laughs> so nice fruit bowl, nice healthy food. Strawberries, we've got melon, watermelon, bananas, pineapple, grapes. Yeah, we've got everything covered there. Nice, colorful image. I'd imagine it's quite a vintage puzzle. Crown puzzles. Anybody heard of crown puzzles? Let me show you the emblem. New one on me. So let's have a look. Open up. Mm. Only covered on two sides with sellotape. This could be a bit dicey. Oh. Flimsy box. Sticker there. Well, hair grip anyone? Oh, 
And there's the piece that didn't make it into the bag. Oh, quite thin. That's quite a thin um, puzzle piece there, folks. And have we got different shapes or is it all standard shapes? Standard shapes, I've got a feeling. Let's have a look. Yeah, all inies and outies. Make it a little bit more tricky, at least with different shapes, you've got a little bit more variety and you can kind of um, sort out and it makes doing a puzzle a lot easier. But when you've got one shape to work with, it's a bit of an extra challenge, you know. Um, yeah, well, have you heard of crown puzzles? Have you done anything like this? I've certainly never seen a puzzle done up with hair grips before. I've seen recycled and sellotape. Um, I suppose you do your puzzle and then you keep the hair so you don't get hair in your puzzle. <laughs> there we go. So that is that. Let's put that to one side. Actually, I'm going to put that down this side because I'm going to run out of space. Ah. Let's take the sticker off of this. Huge box huge box and we are in the British Isles I've done one of these before and it was Ireland and um, this takes me back to my childhood and I used to do sort of these kind of illustrated puzzles before like jig jig map do you remember Waddington's jig map anybody jig jig map that's it uh, pic picture map puzzle of the British Isles and it was complete on the 22nd of the 3rd, 1922. I like it when they put a date on because it actually, you know, you can have just say complete, but it might have been completed five years ago and done, be done subsequently a few more times. But I would imagine that it's actually complete because the date is quite, um, this is from this year. So get that knife. Let's tuck into the British Isle, shall we? As I say, great big, box and I think in the olden days they might have instead of having like um sorting boxes you would just like dip the pieces in the box and just like dibble and dabble like that so there we go let's put that down there a bag oh and a cable tie this time so it's quite interesting to see how people bag things up Now, I know these pieces are quite large, so you need a big puzzle board for this. And I think, was it 500 pieces? Yes. And it's by, sorry, JR Jigsaws. So, and yeah, quite a nice size. So, if you see my thumb, yeah, um, quite a thick, sturdy card. Lots of text, lots of fun imagery on there. And it just makes it ni a nice puzzle to do, not particularly challenging and learn up learn your geography a little bit so and again all different is that different puzzle shapes or are they all standard no we've got some different shapes in there so yeah you've got two innies and two outies and then you've got that one but it's a different that's the standard shape and that's a different shape but same innies and outies do you give your puzzle pieces names? Let me know in the comments. Oh, I'm getting boxed in here. Right, oh, lovely. Waddington's, 500 pieces. Ah, that's good because I've got the price on the back of this one, so I haven't got to worry about peeling stickers off. Um, so we've got the Big Apple cartoon, and this one's called I Love New York by Danny Byrne. I do love New York. I saw this, I thought it's fairly vintage, and I just love all the fun stuff going on there. A busy puzzle, I call. Waddington's. Let's get my knife and cut into the apple, the big apple. Turn the puzzle over. Yep, got a bag, good. Resealable bag, even better. No cable ties or hair grips for this. Let's 
have a look. Standard and, oh yeah, regular cut and all the usual suspect puzzle pieces in here. All the innies, or, or is it all the outies? Got three, three outies and one innie. And yeah, nice standard shape, bit of a green backing on that one. Bit like the, is it the wash gidges? They're a bit like that, that color. So there we go. Very pleased with that particular purchase. And as I say, remember, these didn't cost much at all. You know, because they do vary in price from different charity shops, depending on where you go, you know, so. I'm very pleased that I picked all these up and there's 13 puzzles here okay and I paid no more than 22 pounds for the lot just to give you an idea so if you ain't come up with any prices then let me know right next one Educa price on the back gorgeous this is Santora gorgeous I own some bags of this character I've got a key ring I've got yeah, I've got a pen, I've got notepads. I love the I love her. I love this image. And I'm so pleased I found her. Um, yeah. Just beautiful, beautiful. Takes me back to my childhood. Remember Holly Hobby? Hobby anybody like that? They used to be like a little character. Yes. Um Educa. So let's have a look. Let's open her up. Puzzle Passion this is um what else to say oh lost piece surface the only one of its kind in the world mm, interesting i wonder if it applies to charity puzzles as well hey eh? let's open her up and have a look 500 pieces Ooh, no bag loose a loose girl <laughs> and ah. Oh, with Educa, they do these funny little shapes where they've sort of kind of got like a little, it's like a little notch, but it's not an any and outy, but I haven't seen these with the other puzzles. So just a little bit of a variation of the regular cut. And again, you sort of got like a, like a pale blue back it, but quite a nice thick cut. I've done Educa before, and there we have a cotton thread very obscure items to be finding in puzzles. What's the funniest thing you found in a puzzle box, apart from the puzzle pieces and the hair, of course? Um, let me know in the comments below. Yeah, so she's lovely. She stood on her, she stood on books. Now, if that was me, I'd be stood, stood on puzzles. So um, <laughs> I might be yeah, trying to get out of this chair later on when I finish this video. Right. Oh, right, now I'm over the moon with this one. This is Victory Hand Cut Jigsaw Puzzle, 20 pieces. Now I've got a few and I'm growing a collection. This is very vintage, um, 20 pieces, aged between three and five years. By well, the age of over 50, I think I can do this one um, very easily. Um, made in England by G.J. Hayter and Company, Bournemouth, a subsidiary of Spears and Sons. Who's good at numer Roman numerals? And tell me the age of this puzzle. Can you see that? So, um, 1979? Let me know if you do know. So let's open up this beautiful puzzle. The box is fairly battered, but then given the age, I would expect that. Oh, oh it's beautiful. Look at this. Got little mice in a shoe. Wow, nice. Look at that. It's like a plywood, wooden. Still can, mm, yeah, smell it a little bit. Got a kind of distinct smell about it. Oh, how beautiful is that? Let me show you the image again, actually. It's covered than the price. How gorgeous is that? And I already own a mice puzzle, and they're in total, 
reading bedtime stories around toast stalls, if I remember correctly. And I've also got Norwegian folk dancers. Um, so yeah, love it. Right, vintage time again. We have got a Harrods puzzle and fully interlocking 500 piece made in England by Falcon Games and this is very retro I'd imagine like 1970s looking at the photographs in this so nothing on the back and there we go have you been to Harrods have you bought anything from Harrods have you bought a puzzle from Harrods perhaps that needs to be on my bucket list I've been in Harrods but I haven't actually bought a puzzle maybe I need to Did I show the price then? I should need to check back and look. No, we don't do cheat here, do we? Um, so there we go. Oh, what have we got here? <laughs> A resealable bag. Freezer tips. Freeze food as soon as possible after purchase. I'm going to freeze the puzzle pieces. Let's open her up. Oh. Or is that the edge pieces? We like people who do that because it shows this puzzle's been cared for. They've got the extra mile and put all the edge pieces in in a separate bag. And here we have all the other pieces. Again, look at this. This is proper sturdy. Good quality. And, yeah. Again, regular cut. Photograph. A bit of a gloss on it but nothing no not to worry really too much about that you've got to expect that and yeah that looks like it's gonna be a good puzzle to do yeah quite sturdy so good quality indeed and the fact that it's in the resealable bags is a bonus let's cover that up done that oh right yes gone with the wind brand new but vintage MP MB puzzles made in Holland so there we are we've got Clark Gable Vivian Lee Leslie Howard and Olivia de Havilland frankly my dear I do give a damn that I bought this and the price wow couldn't fault, couldn't fault, you couldn't do it, couldn't, just, it was fantastic. So let's break the cellophane because this has actually never been done. It's like Christmas. Let's open up. white wedge cinema so I wonder if there's more titles in this it'd be interesting to see perhaps I'll do a little bit of um, research anybody own anything like this any kind of movie poster puzzles oh there you go 1992 MB puzzles. <laughs> I love opening these up, but can you think you put them back together again? So we've got all sorts of things on here. Ah, so cinema, we've got one in the collection and I own it. But there are posters, you've got a uh, Marilyn Monroe and I think you've got, who's that down there? Is that Jim? D James Dean, how many film buffs there with us today? Um, so what else have we got? We've got um, Romantic, we've got um, Buildings, we've got Animals, we've got Nature, we've got Wind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a wind collection, although it does look like ships to me, but what do I know? <laughs> oh gosh. Um, <laughs> We've got modern, we've got greetings, so we've got everything covered here. And um, passion. Is that hobbies? 
very unusual titles for some of these puzzles and you've got a variety but they've all got women on so go figure interesting do any of these look familiar very strange um let's put that down let's open this up i'm gonna open this so i don't want to like break it and go psh, have pieces go everywhere i'm not doing a very good job here people but then when i do the puzzle i put it back in the receivable bag anyhow so i'm going to change this um Again, this looks very familiar. Um, again, is that green backing? Is it the same puzzle manufacturer, do you think? And again, regular cut. And um, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So, standard shapes. A, vari a variety of the usual shapes. So, perhaps I will puzzle this while watching the film. And the film's about four hours long, I believe. But it might take longer to do the puzzle, I reckon. For some, it might be quicker. Not me, I'm a slow puzzler. I take my time. Right. Ah. This one's for my little Antip Antipodean friends. Yes. So, if you live in Australia, then let me know in the comments below and you can pinpoint where exactly you do live. I would love to visit Australia. I would love to see the different culture. I just, I love it. I just think, yeah, but the flight scares me all the way from UK. So um, I have to save up my pennies, but that is on my bucket list to go and visit. And um, let's open up and look. Again, okay, 500 pieces, but the box would warrant a thousand pieces, huge great big box and these days boxes are coming down in size which makes stacking them a lot easier and you've even got a lot of space even better because could you imagine if you collected puzzles in the olden days and they were all this size, it'd, you, you, it'd be very difficult, I'd still do it but it may be very difficult. <laughs> So we've got picture map puzzle of Australia and New Zealand. Let's not forget New Zealand. I like to visit there as well. And again by JR Puzzles, which is the same series as the British Isles puzzle I featured earlier. So we're oh this bag's loose. This box is loose. There's nothing in here. So hopefully all the territories are represented and if it's missing. And again, that same kind of illustration and fun text and cartoon look on it nice and vibrant colors fun puzzles love it so that's that one and a clue this one was a different price than the British Isles puzzle so there we go they do vary from charity shops you know puzzle pieces and prices should I say and here we have another content we got America the States so again, if you're American or from the States, let me know where you're based. I'd be interested to know where people watch from. So again, same kind of premise. Let's open up the box. Great big box, great big country. Oh, again. This must be from the same people, I reckon, because again, it's not boxed up, puzzled, bagged up, I mean, it's boxed up, but not bagged up. Perhaps they couldn't find a bag big enough because the, I say the pieces are quite large. So if I put that in the palm of my hand, you can see what kind of size we're dealing with. Okay. So I might puzzle all these together and half half the world on my floor. Definitely running out of space. Right, finally the 13th puzzle. And this one I'm very pleased with. Um, 2,000 pieces. 
Ravensburger. Make sure the price is not on the edge. Right, I'm going to cover that over. And here we have an Amy Stewart puzzle from 2014. And this is called World of Books. And we've got literally the whole world is covered here. So you've got the different continents. I think you've got sort of London in the middle. My sight's not what it is. So from this angle, trying to look in the camera. And it's 2,000 pieces. I wonder how much I paid for this. I'm going to tell you soon. Don't worry. Um, so let's open her up. Ravensburger is a good quality. Can't go wrong with them. Mm, but it's not bagged. Oh, and we have this. Mm, so it has been pre-done, obviously, because I think the, it would be still in the bag otherwise. And so it's slightly interlocking in the box. So I'm going to be a good girl and break it all up. I'm not a cheat. I don't do puzzles thinking, oh, wow, well, I'll just leave that there and make it a bit easier. Well, she says that, but strictly, if there's a really challenging puzzle, i.e. my solid purple one or anything that's all solid colour, mm, don't know. But I try not to. I try to be good. Do you, do, do you break everything up or do you, do, or do you cheat or do you just think, got the help you need so again is that nice blue back in the standard cuts of a Ravensburger and um, there we go right so there we go let me show you that again I'm now going to share with you the prices I paid so right so I bought 13 puzzles and the total cost of all those puzzles I've just shown you was £22. So I picked this one up, are you ready? For a pound. Yeah, I picked a 2,000 piece puzzle up for a pound. I also picked this one up for a pound. Brand new, remember, it was sealed. What else have we got? We have got this one, was a pound. This one was a pound. And we had the two Australian and the American ones. Of John, John, is it JR? I'm going to say Jonathan Ross. Sorry, Jonathan Ross or JR Ewan. Uh, <laughs> Surely. Um, JR Jigsaws. These were a pound. Okay. I'm going to put those there because it's all going to be rather messy. What else was a pound? Oh, yes. The this one was a pound. It was a pound. It was all a pound. No, it wasn't, though. There were some a little bit more expensive. <laughs> I think one of these was the British Isles was £1.50 but then the prices are higher in England at the moment in Britain um, <laughs> so that's that then we have the gorgeous ones she was £2.50 as was the New York one that was £2.50. The Mickey Mouse, let me get back on track here. Ooh. Disney one by Jumbo. That was £2. And then we go to the most expensive one. The Hamster Durable one from Otter House was £3. And finally, the Exit one. And get it. Yeah, it's all over here on the floor. Is there on the floor? The exit pound was three pound. So total bargain, don't you think? And um, 
really, really, really pleased with my puzzle haul. So tell me, do you like these puzzles? Have I done well? And when you go to a puzzle shop or a charity shop particularly, how much do you pay for or what's the least you've paid for a puzzle? Um, but I think a pound to go, you cannot sniff at that. You cannot leave them on the shelf for that. You know, it'd be rude not to pick it up, wouldn't it? So um, I hope you enjoy my puzzle haul. I enjoyed opening them up with you. Um, did you ever go at guessing the prices? And um, thank you so much for the people that subscribe to my new YouTube channel. I'm having fun. And um, give us a like, you know, because it helps spread the word to other puzzlers. And I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you again. But now, anyhow, bye-bye and happy puzzling.